I want to show you something. I managed to make something work finally. So we've got working headlights. That's good. They were working when it arrived as well, but now they're working properly. The noise is the dynamo for some reason. Up until now it's not made any noise at all, but as you heard, uh, I don't know, is this bit here? As soon as the ignition's on, it's running. Now the battery is almost flat, so I wonder if it's something to do with the fact that with the battery being so flat, this is just desperately trying to put charge back in the system. But on the other side, this is a very simple system. I'd be very surprised if it had any sort of smart tech like that. I'm encountering a few issues on this job at the moment. As far as I can tell, all the wiring here matches what the wiring loom says. We've got a earth point here which I've put in that I've had to put in because I couldn't see another earth point and the wiring that was in here didn't really give me any clues. So this is a best guess sort of situation. Um, I've been checking connections for the rear light here for the brake lights themselves as well. I can't get any of this to light up and I can't see what's amiss. The bulbs themselves seem to be okay. So I don't know, I've missed something obvious, I know that much. I'm just not sure what. With the dynamo, it is still just running, but one suggestion from Peter on one of the forums was that maybe the contacts in here are stuck. Now, they didn't look stuck, but they do have a fair bit of corrosion on them, which isn't ideal. The other interesting thing is when I'd taken the cover off, before I'd connected the battery and I'd had a bit of a wiggle of things, first time I started the car, the dynamo didn't come on immediately as it has done before, and then after a little while, it did. But I saw no changes up here. So I don't know what that means, because, well, I, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> basically. I'm learning as I go, so it's all a bit of a mystery to me. Because I can't do anything with that, because I need to do some research, I changed tack. Completely forgot to record it, but dismantled this light, which was a pain in the bum. I... Uh, they're not fun. But... The possible reason this wasn't working is the connectors inside were quite badly corroded, the bulb that's in there also quite badly corroded. So I've cleaned everything up, the bulb works, so fingers crossed, and I've run the wiring that goes to this. On the original loom there's one wire for pass light, which, well, it was an interesting thing. It appears in the brochure but it also appears blanked out in the brochure. I recently got hold of an original brochure for one of these cars, and I wonder if it's one of those things that was a carryover from the Briggs body cars, and then they blanked it off on these. I don't know. But that's wired as per the wiring diagram I have, so that should work. The fog light isn't wired in yet. I've not got that far. <laughs> Underneath the car, this is the speedo cable and it is routed very, very badly. I haven't changed the routing on this since we got the car. So I'm going to have to unscrew this from the back of the dashboard and reroute it properly because at the moment it goes on the exhaust and all sorts. It's terrible. Not under here to do this though, I'm under here to sort this out, which I'm not going to be able to record removal of because um, it's, it's quite difficult to do that when you're on the floor on the driveway, but there's two bolts. I think they go into captive nuts. I hope they do, because if not, I'm going to have to take the floor out again. And I want to find out why this switch doesn't seem to be working. It's probably dirty like everything else. And then I can get the new wires connected up to it. Perhaps this is why the rear lights aren't working. 
Seems unlikely, but perhaps it is. If I can tick one more item off the list, it'll help. The other thing down here of note is this is the main lead from the battery and um, we don't like this <laughs> so at some point I've got to get the parts to make a new one. I can't get one long enough off the shelf. Uh, this cable runs all the way from the front of the car, it connects to the starter motor here and it goes all the way down to the battery box over there. So it's a very long cable. Shouldn't be a bad job to do, but again, it's not the routing on it's not great, so I want to fix that too. So I'll get this off, we'll see what we're dealing with, and uh, hopefully it's not too bad. Now I've done it a few times, getting the floor out isn't too difficult. It is necessary, unfortunately. This is the brake switch bracket, and this one here, I can't actually get anything other than a spanner on the bolt on the other side and you can't move the spanner you can just hold it in place so you have to undo the nuts from the top they're not captive because of course they're not and disconnecting this spring would have been tricky because you can't really access that from underneath the car so I'm going to quickly pop this out because uh, I've got the car jacked up the door keeps shutting on me so I can't record to show you but we'll have a look at the switch once it's off the car and this is the brake light switch removed it was with the nuts and bolts a case of best fit um, nothing I'd got seemed to be exactly the size they were so that was fun um, this looks quite new compared to other things I've taken off the car I wonder if this is a generic part that's been used because when I pull the rubber boot back for the connectors there those wires, they're not as old looking as everything else on the car, not as worn out. The part moves nice and freely, there's, there's no concerns there. You know, I can just do it awkwardly with one hand. So I think the problem was probably the wiring here, because what I chopped off, the connectors weren't very good, and it was the old wiring that's been redone, so it wasn't in great shape. So. I'm going to find relevant connectors for these and pop this back on. There's not really anything for me to do with this. I can't I can't dismantle it to clean it up. And it looks okay. All connected and back in. I'm at a bit of a loss at the moment as well because I'm struggling to figure a few things out on the wiring. I know I've still got a few things left to connect, but I know this works, which is the dim dip switch. But, I only have headlights on main beam. I have no brake lights. I have no running lights on the back. Obviously I've got no indicators at the moment because the control for that, the, the starter tube that goes in here, isn't actually connected yet. So, I'm not surprised I've got no indicators. That's normal. I also don't have any side lights yet because they're not wired up. That might be affecting the headlights. I don't know. This light doesn't come on at all, I don't know why. The dynamo has gone from running all the time to running usually but not all the time, so I don't know what's going on with that. I, I can't figure out what's going on in the box here. Yeah, I, I need somebody to come and give me some advice on this one because I am at a point where I don't really understand what I've missed. So I kind of just have to keep going with it until I find something that works, I guess. I don't know. It shouldn't be this difficult. But it is. We've been having a problem with the interior light not working and the brake lights not working. Either as running lights or as brake lights. I've already tested the bulbs that are in here and they test perfectly fine. So I know the bulbs work. I've got a freshly charged battery. Before we get into that, I also had a bit of a mishap. I've been very careful with these glass lenses. I've mentioned before, it's very easy to drop them and break them. I dropped one and I broke it. Not pleased about that. 
you can get replacements, they do pop up variously, they're generally not cheap, that's the only problem. We shan't worry about that for now, accidents happen. It's a bit crude, this setup, I don't have alligator clips or such, so I just have one wire here going into the earth point, and then I have one wire each for running and brake light. That's what these two posts are for, one gives you a connection to run in and one gives you a connection to brake, as I'll show you in a moment. Okay, so just to stop it dazzling the camera, I'm going to use one of the spare lenses. This is the original style for the car, as far as I'm aware. I would like to get another one of these, but I don't know what they're called or who makes them. There's no markings on it. So that's brake, I think. Yeah, and that's running light. You can see the brightness difference between the two. But it is quite satisfying to see that working, finally. The other thing I learned through the course of testing, we painted this one with chrome paint inside. Now when we got this unit, it was just red oxide primer, so obviously not ideal. The cream white coloured one, that's factory, that's how they were done originally. This finish is much brighter. I'll have to rejig the wiring to demonstrate that, uh, but give me a moment and I shall sort that out. Just been having a tidy up in the boot here while I get ready to put the lights back on. Just sorted out all the spare bits and pieces. We've got the light units painted up. Now chrome on the inside, purple on the outside because that's the only paint I had to hand. They're going to be in the wings, you won't see them, it doesn't matter. I am going to have to replace this strap here and the other one because this one unfortunately rotted out by the screws. This is just standard webbing stuff, it's for holding the tool roll in, I think. So I'll make a new one of those. I've still got the buckle, which is good. And I popped off the bumper because I was a bit annoyed with it just catching me, because it's loose. And I found that this one is just completely loose and might be bent, I'm not sure. The other side doesn't seem to be. But one of the reasons is to make the bumper clear the boot lid, in the past somebody's put a lot of washers in to stack it out. Wow, I'm in my own shadow here. Never mind. The bumper itself is nice and straight, which is great. The chrome shot on it, but that's not the end of the world. The overriders here, you can see, are slightly bent on the bolt. So, yeah, I guess they backed into something, and it bent these. I'm going to see if I can straighten those out with a bit of heat, and get everything reassembled, hopefully get everything straightened out on the back a little bit. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect, just as long as it's not all wobbly like it is at the moment. One of the other items in need of a good clean is the number plate light. This just goes on the outside of the boot. You can see it's got quite a bit of paint on the old seal. It's quite dirty. And take this one apart is fairly straightforward. You've just got one nut, and it is a nut because it's got a threaded post. So it's like a, a sleeve with a thread on the inside. So even though it looks like a bolt, it's actually a nut. And that helps keep everything centralised.
There you go, nice and simple. This piece is glass, so as with the other lights, do be careful. They're fairly tough, but one fumble and you've wrecked it. You can get replacement ones of these. The quality does vary. This is the number plate light. It's come up much better than I expected. I thought this was going to be quite badly pitted because of how it looked. This side is just through the ultrasonic cleaner. So you can see what it leaves behind. There's just a few marks, which is what I thought might be pitting. There's a bit of like finger mark looking marks on there. So the ultrasonic cleaner, if I kept putting it through, it probably would have removed all of that. As it is, it's a little bit quicker once you get to about this stage to just polish it. And I'm just using regular Autosol. You can just see there the slight pitting and corrosion just from it being a very old component. But again, it's come up remarkably well, much better than I expected that to. So I'll polish the other side, this side, and get rid of all these last little marks. And from the distance most people are going to view this, it will look like a really excellent piece. So I'm really happy about that. One of the things we opted for as an extra on the wiring is a power socket. And I ordered one of these generic marine application power sockets online. We already knew that underneath this panel here, which is where your radio normally goes, were two screw holes that we could repurpose. Unfortunately, they're not exactly aligned with this, but we can still use one of them, and I'll drill the other one. And that sits just nice next to the washer jet push. Only thing is, this is just a generic cigarette lighter, and it looks, I don't know, it just looks out of place. And we won't be using this to light cigarettes anyway, so we also don't need the little logo. The illumination bit needs to come off, partly because we're not using it, but also because you can't get it through this with the illumination thing on. So that just wants trimming off. This green plastic is actually the locking ring that holds it into the dashboard. One of our neighbours was having a garage clear out, and one of the things was a whole batch of cigarette lighters. Various different ages from different cars. And since I only want a blanking plug in here, well, it makes sense to use one of these instead of the rubbery one. Now pick these two out, and I think they both match fairly well. So when they're in here, they'll look fairly generic, which is what I'm after. I think this one is from something 70s which is in keeping with this pull, which I'm pretty sure is also a 70s, um, a, well, push rather. So those two match quite nicely. This one's more nondescript, and this one actually fits better in the socket. Um, it also has a little recess in, so I could get a sticker made for that, and have something put on it, perhaps. So it'll be one of these two that we'll use, I think I like this one a little bit more. I think it just feels more in keeping with the car. A little bit scruffier. The little logo's nice. You know, it, it sort of matches what's going on with everything else. We shall see. You'll have to excuse the background noise. Every time I press record, it starts. A little while ago, I got these mirrors. And like the interior mirror, these are from Stadium, which there you go. These were fairly popular through the 60s into the 70s, even the 80s, and you do see a lot of older cars with these kind of mirrors on. They felt like the right sort of thing. They're not perfect by any stretch. The stainless is slightly damaged, the mirror is fogged around the edges a little bit, but that's perfect for this car. They're not great. Um, they've got a magnifying lens on them, but they do give us a bit more visibility behind us 
than the wing mirror there, which I need to replace. I've got a replacement, I just need to get that fitted. But they're okay, you know? They'll let us have a smaller blind spot on the car. I may yet move them. When you're in the car, you can see behind you. The only annoying thing with them is the bracket isn't offset, so I can't turn them on their side, which would give us a lot more useful visibility. They have to be vertical like that. They might work better if they're mounted further up the door, perhaps. But for now, at least we've got some mirrors. And they match the one that's up here. Um, which again, it's a stadium one and it'll be a similar age to these, so in my head at least, I feel like this is something that a previous owner could have fitted when the car was still in use in the late 70s. <sighs> Not much to go now though, just a few bits and bobs here and there to put in. It's just finding the time more than anything at the moment. I need a little bit of dark to test some things at the moment. If I turn the ignition on... Look at that! The dynamo's not running. The oil light comes on. The ignition light isn't coming on now. It was, now it's not. But, the dashboard lights up. And I know that doesn't look great, but that's actually better than it used to be. Now underneath here is a little toggle switch. Great. That is a factory item to turn your dash lights off if they're too distracting at night, which um, yeah, I don't think we'll be using that very much, if at all. Unfortunately, the little clock doesn't seem to work, so we need to look at what's going on there. That could be a wiring issue, could be the clock itself, but the other instruments do work, that's all good. Another wiring issue I need to sort out is if we switch from side lights to dip beam, or you know headlights, there isn't anything on. But if you then turn on main beam, You can see, reflected in Pat's headlights, the headlights do come on. Because at the moment, you know, you turn your headlights on, it turns all the running lights off. That's the opposite of what you want. But I'm delighted that the instrument cluster lights up, and it's quite a charming thing. We finally figured out one more problem on the car, which was the headlights. Following the instructions I had previously, I thought this red with a black trace went to the spotlight on the front of the car. That's what everything I had at the time suggested. I couldn't figure out why there were three connectors in the headlights and only two wires. I now know this is actually for the headlights. And we shall do a little demonstration. So, if you can put the headlights on please. As you can see the headlight now actually works. And main beam, and main beam, for which there's very little difference. Let's move you around the back and show you what happens when we turn the headlights on at the front. You turn it off. And the main beam still on? Yeah, just turn it off please. Main beam off? Yes. And off. I don't know if the camera can hear me from here. We shall see. Can you put the side lights on for me? And then put the headlights on. Main beam. And off, please. Bit of an odd problem, that one. When you put the side lights on, these are coming on like they should. But as soon as you turn the headlights on, all of the lights on the back of the car turn off. And I don't know why. 
So we've got to do a little bit more work to try and figure out what's going on there, because that's a bit of a strange one. Still, it's a little bit more progress. We'll get there. Got one eye back in, figured out all the wiring connections and things, tested everything, and then this one, the main beam filament burned out on the bulb. So, took everything apart. But before I show you that, these are the connectors that it should have, rather than these style bullet connectors. So I've sorted these ones out, and these just push into the socket on the bulb holder. And unfortunately, when I remove the headlight to have a look at the bulb with the blown filament, I've also got to figure out what these bulbs are. I've not seen bulbs like this before, and they've got an angled base on them, which I assume is fairly important. So I'm going to get a pair of these from somewhere, but the issue is something I didn't know about. There was some metal fatigue on this tab, so I'm going to have to solder that back together, I think. It's a bit of a nuisance, because I don't really enjoy soldering. At least another headlights work. It's just a bit of a nuisance that that's happened. Now the reason I think the metal fatigues happened is these were all bent out of shape. They were no longer round to accommodate the bullet connectors that were on there with the wiring that had been done previously. And now that I've put the correct ones on, these are very carefully reshaped to be round. But on this one, one side of the split is new, one side looks fairly old. So I think there was quite a bit of metal fatigue had happened there, and that's what had caused the problem. Copper gets brittle as you work it, so that's probably where the issues come from. Not to worry, it's something I can fix, and worst case scenario, I'll get another one of these bulb holders. These are generic light units, they were used on a lot of cars, so I can't see that being too much of a problem to get. How do you change a light bulb on one of these cars? Well, the first thing you do is you pry this off. There's usually a slidey tab under there. Prise the bezel off. Not the finest repair in the world. And I've got that back together. That soldering iron is rubbish and the solder I'm using is not much better. So that should be okay. And this is your bulb holder. And that goes on the back of your bulb. So this is the bit you see from the outside with your, your glass lens, your reflector and your chrome bezel. The chrome bezel locks onto the headlight mounting. If you ever need to take this out for any reason, there's these spring clips, there's four of them, and you push these down to release and up to locate them. They like to ping off, um, so I'm not going to show you right now, but they like to ping off and disappear. Also, on the back of these bowls are the locating pieces here, which go into this tab, so that you can get your headlights the right way around. You have to remove this piece, but not the spring clips, to get your bulb out. And your bulb lives in there. There's a little dimple which lines up with this bulb. The other thing with these bulbs is they have an angled base. I don't know a lot about bulbs, period, and I know even less about this period. These are pre-focus bulbs, and as I understand it, this is more important for your beam alignment than the reflector on the glass. They both work together, of course, but the bulb being the right angle and alignment is the most important part. Now this one has burned out the main beam filament because it's an old bulb. There we go. And this piece here is what holds it on, so you push it on and there's a bayonet fitting just there. So, 
push it on and twist it round and that holds your bulb in place. Normally you wouldn't disconnect the wires, you just twist this off and remove it and then you can get to the bulb to replace it. I had to remove the wires because one of these had broken. There we go, that's all back together. It's not the, uh, the best looking system, but that's what this car has. And that snaps back into place like so.